to worship in the Word of Fellowship. My son just called me a boomer. We don't like being called boomers. You're not. I'm, I'm, am I, I'm the last. You're a boomer? I'm not a boomer. What am I? You're a buster. I'm a buster. <laughs> Go and, and he's a millennial, right? You're a millennial? Well, it's good to be. I was talking with Dan about horses. It's good to be back in the saddle again. Yes. <laughs> and I don't know if, if anybody, I don't know if y'all know this or not, but um, every year since we were engaged, my husband, starting February 1st through Valentine's Day, gets me a little something every day. It's not something big. It could be something on my dashboard or something in the fridge waiting on me or something by the sink. But he got me these tonight, and I brought them to church, and they're dove uh, little candies, and they say dare on them. And then the other ones say truth. So I know it's supposed to be truth or dare, you know, a little game. But it works for us, the dare and the truth, all right, because we are all about the truth. So let's get going and worship the Lord and the truth tonight. Here we go. Stop! 
been walking the same old road for miles and miles. If you've been hearing the same old voice tell the same old lie. If you've been trying to fill the same old holes inside. Well, there's a better life, yes. There's a better life. If you've got pain, he's a pain taker. If you feel lost, he's a way maker. If you need freedom, save it. He's a prison shaking savior. If you've got chains, he's a chain breaker. Are you happy about that tonight? Hallelujah. We've all searched for the light of day in the dead of night. Found ourselves worn out from the same old fight. Oh, we've all run to things we know just ain't right. But there's a better life, a better life. If you got change, he's a pain taker. If you feel lost, he's a way. If you need freedom, saving, risen, shaking Savior. If you got chains, he's a chain break. Come on, sing it again. If you got pain, hallelujah, pain taker. If you feel lost, he's a way maker. If you need freedom, saving. He's a prison shaking savior. If you got chains, chain breaker. Yeah. 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 Come on, sing it. Yeah.
mention of your name. Come on, say his name. Jesus, your name is power. everything to us and more. I can't even imagine waking up in the morning and you not being there, acknowledging you throughout the day, constantly having you in my mind and asking you to help me with this and help me with that. And then as I make it home to have you and your presence be in our house. God, you're always with us. You're always there. You just want us to have fellowship with you. Help us to do that on a more consistent basis, to always call out on you. I love you, God, and I thank you for being my best friend, the Lord of my life, living and breathing inside of me, God. You are the air that I breathe. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your presence. Isn't his presence a good thing? Love it. Honey. Y'all can be seated. after that. I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep going. And we do. We tell each other every day that we love each other. But it's so important to tell the people that God has given you in your life how much you appreciate them. It's so easy to be critical. It's so easy to point out the things that irritate us about each other. Um, but make sure that the love and the appreciation for what God has given us in our lives um, outweighs criticism. It's so easy to so easy to get irritated. Renee and I 
after all these years, we kind of know each other's moods and patterns. I, I attempted to be really, really nice to her at 10 o'clock this morning, and I should know better than to try to talk to my wife before noon. She comes alive after noon, and I know that after many, many years. And, um, and then, you know, I also notice that when she's watching a television program that she likes not to keep talking and inter interrupting, because then she, what she does is she pushes pause and then just gives me this look, like, you have something to say? So um, those are the things you learn. And you learn to love those things, you learn to appreciate those things, and you learn to respect those things. Um, and uh, I appreciate her very much. She has been, um, I should probably wait till next week. Next week's the 14th, right? I'll put something on Facebook. But the, um, the, uh, the things that she has done to support this ministry and me, um, even though she went through a lot herself, you know, um, a lot of loss, a lot of hurt, never would have known it when I was crying, when I was upset, she was picking up the slack. And uh, I'm grateful to the Lord that um, I listened to him when he kept telling her that I was the man for her. And I was like, I'm not sure about that for about 10 years. And I finally, I like to say I finally slowed down and let her catch me. But no, I turned around and I'm like, what am I doing? But you know what? One thing we learned through all that is the Lord's will and the Lord's timing are hand in hand. The Lord's will has to follow his timing. We can't rush his will. And too many times we want things to be exactly the way we think they should be. We think we know what God's will is and to prosper us. And then when it slows down, we're frustrated and we don't recognize and that's really what the lord has been laying on my heart even the last month or so about waiting for that bigger miracle you know when jesus tarried going to lazarus and mary and martha said where were you if you'd have been here we would have had a miracle and he's like you don't know what you're talking about you're about to have a big miracle and uh that's what the lord is teaching us through this and anyway saying all that i said appreciate my wife appreciate my son and I appreciate all of you. Those that are in this room tonight have been constant. They have been roots, columns, framework, scaffolding, uh, brick layers, foundation pourers. And um, I, I would pale in comparison to what I've been able to bless them with, to what they've blessed me with. And... and at they as well, having gone through each one, hardships and trials, and um, and we're all learning in this life that the trials and the tribulations are designed by God for our good. And uh, our American church culture, we don't like that. We like everything to be perfect, our creature comforts to be all lined up, and we spend way too much time trying to make that happen when the Lord says, I want to take you through your trial. I want to take you through. I got to teach you some. You don't know what's coming. I know what's coming. I have to prepare my children so that they will not be destroyed. They will not be devoured. The last thing the Lord wants is for us to be devoured and to be destroyed and perish but if we would only as a church listen to him and be trained by him and listen to the spirit of God and what he wants to do in our lives because he knows the days ahead are dark the days ahead the last days there's going to be perilous times he's told us that and yet we continue to I've just seen, you know, we've, we've seen this shake up in the church over the last, I think it's been more than a year or two. It's been decades that the church has gotten off track. They've been more about building a church. 
there was such emphasis on church growth and the more emphasis on church growth, the more the growth went down. And still to this day, the church is losing people. The Christian church is losing people. I know in America especially. Why? Because we have spent so much time building a church and not enough time building a kingdom. And all we've done in, in my ministry, in my lifetime, is swap people. Oh, I go to this church. It's the best church. Other churches may be good, but I go to this church. It's the best church. And very little about the reason for the church and about Jesus Christ. And you know what? This past week, I was just going to, you know, have us pray tonight. We will. We're going to pray. And But the Lord, has, the Lord has taught me this week and just challenged me in a way, in an authority in the spirit that I've yet to be challenged. I, I have been in the church my whole life and my focus and my ministry has always been to make a good church service. You know, especially as a minister of music. We practice and we perform which it's okay. David played before the Lord. David you know, it says play skillfully, but there's there's a, a mean an end to the means, and it's not a good performance. It's that God is lifted up, and as He is as Jesus is lifted up, He draws all men to Himself, and then what He He establishes through His blood that we talked about last week that there is a release from the grip of Satan, hell, and the grave on the people who apply the blood. There to my heart was the blood applied, right? Down at the cross where my Savior died. Glory to his name. So we are now released to do what? To settle in a church, to sit back. Oh, that was a good service. Let's go to lunch. Let's go watch the Super Bowl, whatever it is. Whatever distraction is still there. You know, I've seen ministers over this last year get on Facebook and opera. You know, we don't know how long we're going to have Facebook as the people of God. And yet we've been using it for anything but sharing Jesus Christ. Every political statement, every. Now, all that's interesting. Very interesting. It's captivating. But it's also distracting to the message of Jesus Christ that this world so desperately needs now. And we, it starts first in the house of the Lord, we need the desperate uh, knowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord and he has a plan and a purpose for our lives and for this world. And, you know, really the Super Bowl and that kind of stuff really isn't in the list. You know, all that stuff we stress about, all that stuff we fixate on, gone. It'll be gone. Just like that. Heaven and earth passes away, but what? My word is eternal forever. And how much time do we spend focusing on the heaven and the earth? And so little time. And so I see these ministers, you know, the, the political posts, and I understand we have to stand for truth in every way in our lives. But we've gone from that, and now we feel like church is getting back to normal and I don't really feel like it's time to get back to normal because I didn't really like the normal we were in. We're supposed to be overcomers. We're supposed to have a power. We're not supposed to have a form of godliness but deny the power and I believe that's what we have done as a church for decades. We have this form of godliness. We have this thing that looks like godliness. Looks like church but there's no power. Where are the signs and wonders that are supposed to follow them that believe? Oh, we don't, we don't want to get involved in all that, Pastor David. Because when you get involved in that, you're getting face-to-face -face with Satan. And I don't want to be face-to-face -face with Satan. He scares me. There is no reason to be scared of Satan. The, we have nothing to fear but fear itself when it comes to him because greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world and Satan's biggest tactic is for you to be afraid of his power and not think that God has so much more power and wants to use us to rebuke him in this generation listen he's coming after us 
He's coming after you. He's coming after my son. He's coming after my wife. He comes after me. And I have had to learn in these last weeks and months to turn around and rebuke him. Say, the Lord rebuke you. Get away from me, you deceiver. You look like you're saying the right thing, but you're trying to take me down a path that the Lord does not want for my life. Don't be a fool, church person, Christian. This, there is a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Put on the full armor of God. Hold up that shield of faith that just blocks his fiery darts. I'm tired of letting that shield down and the fiery darts hit me. And now I've got to deal with the dart wound. And I've got to worry about that when I could have all the time just said... No, all power and authority has been given to me through Jesus Christ. Once again, that's not part of what I felt like I was going to talk about tonight. That's a the freebie, right? But I, it, it's what I believe the Holy Spirit. I pray that the Holy Spirit would guide us into the truth of what he wants to reveal to us tonight. And I pray that we all make that our prayer. That... In this world of deception that is under the control of Satan, Jesus himself said, the prince of this world is in control. But I have overcome the world, didn't he? He said that. But there's going to be a showdown someday. Satan's going to be kicked out. God's going to be in charge of the whole thing again. But for this time, Satan is a part of this worldly system. And we have to recognize that. And we can't wink at it. We can't say, oh, there's, it's, he's got no power. He's got a lot of power. And he's desperate. He's desperate because he knows his days are numbered. We're going to talk about that. But, you know, I've never been, I've never been one that is this one that does these proclamations. You know, I've always kind of stepped away from that type of theology because what I've seen uh, over my lifetime is that people that are really into that, they tend to get very um, carnal with it. And they make, pro again, proclamations more about their creature comfort than about spiritual warfare. And I am learning every day throughout what we are experiencing in our world today that there's spiritual warfare that has nothing to do with my house, my car. It has nothing to do with all that. God shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory. But there's a fight to be fought, not against flesh and blood. Our fight is not carnal, but it is against principalities and powers. It is a pulling down of strongholds. We are told to do it. We're not supposed to elect people to do it. We are the people. We are the people of God. We can speak and pull down strong, taking every thought captive, making it obedient to Jesus, and punishing every act of sinful in our lives. We have that authority. I believe God is right, raising up a remnant in 2021 now of this group that's going to come out of the church. They're going to come out of the church because the church has decided we're powerless. The church has decided not to activate that, not to engage in that. They just want to get their latte and their uh, concert in. And I don't have a problem with lattes. Please don't misunderstand what I'm saying. But those are all distractions of the enemy to get our eyes off of what God is trying to accomplish in our lives. He says we are more than conquerors. We are overcomers. And yet we sit back and, oh, well, I'm happy to be in church. This is a great feeling. But then i got to go face the world and I just get defeated. And what? No. You are a child of God in the world. In the face of darkness, you're the light that shines. And we have to... I've been learning about this authority. Matthew chapter 7, and finally to the Bible. Well, I think I've been there already, but Matthew chapter 17, beginning with verse 14. When they came to the crowd, a man approached Jesus and knelt before him. 
Lord, have mercy on my son, he said. He has seizures and is suffering greatly. He often falls into the fire or into the water. Look at this. I brought him to your disciples, but they could not heal him. And Jesus, he, he's, now he's talking to his disciples, not this man. He says, oh, unbelieving and perverse generation, Jesus replied. How long shall I stay with you? How long shall I put up with you? He's saying, do you not realize I have all power and authority and I've given it to you? So Jesus said, bring the boy here to me. Jesus rebuked the demon and it came out of the boy and he was healed from that moment. Rebuked the demon, not the boy. He rebuked the demon and it came out of the boy and he was healed from that moment. Then the disciples came to Jesus in private and asked, why couldn't we drive it out? He replied, because you have so little faith. I tell you the truth, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to the mount, this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move. Nothing will be impossible for you. Now, one of the things I notice about this is Jesus didn't say, pray about the mountain. He didn't say, get on Facebook and say, I've got a mountain, folks. Can you agree with me in prayer? He didn't say, well, think about it, work it out, get a committee together and figure out how we're going to tackle this mountain. No, he said, with a grain of faith, like a mustard seed, you just say to the mountain, get out. And it does. That's the kind of faith that we need to have. Why? Because Jesus promised that he would give us, look at one chapter earlier in chapter 16, beginning with verse 13. Is that right? Matthew 16, verse 13. When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do the people say that the Son of Man is? They replied, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others, Jeremiah or one of the prophets. But what about you, he asked, who do you say I am? Simon Peter answered, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Jesus replied, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by man, but by my father in heaven. And I tell you that you are Peter. And on this rock, not Peter the rock, on this rock that Jesus is the son of the living God, I will build my church and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. I don't care what the government tries to do. I don't care what restrictions are put on us. I don't care how much they try to silence the church. Jesus said, if you build it on the rock, that Jesus is Lord, that Jesus is the Christ, the gates of hell will not prevail against the true truth of the church. But look at this. Verse 19, I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. The Bible says in Revelation, turn over there real quick, Revelation chapter 12, it's through our speaking that we are overcomers, right? It's through our mouths that we make the proclamations that we say to the mountain, be removed. That we say to Satan, get thee behind me. You have no power or authority. That we speak to the Spirit and say, release them in the name of Jesus. And in Revelation chapter 12, you know this well, verse 10. Then I heard a loud voice in heaven say, now have come the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ. For the accuser 
of our brother, Satan, who accuses them before our God day and night, has been hurled down. Thank God. They overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. The blood of Jesus overcomes him and by the word of their testimony. Their strong belief that the gates of hell will not prevail. That Satan has no power and authority in the life of the child of God. The, it overcome him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. They did not love their lives so much as to shrink from death. Therefore, rejoice, you heavens, and you who dwell in them. But woe to the earth and the sea. Look at this. Because the devil has gone down to you. He is filled with fury because he knows that his time is short. In this last month, haven't we seen the fury, the hatred? That is not people. That is Satan. That is the devil devil. There is no hate in godliness. It's all in satanic. He is filled with fury. And he's got an opportunity right now to express his fury. But remember, we overcome him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of our testimony. And who is the lamb? The lamb is Jesus. You know what I've seen in the church today? People don't say Jesus anymore. They say God. I thank God. There's nothing without Jesus. He's King of kings and Lord of lords. Look at, in, in um, let's do Matthew real quick. Matthew chapter 24. Starting with verse 23. At that time, if anyone, this is Jesus talking. At that time, if anyone says to you, look, here is the Christ, or there he is, do not believe it. For false Christs and false prophets will appear and perform great signs and miracles to deceive even the elect, if that were possible. See, I have told you ahead of time. 2 Corinthians chapter 11. You guys are learning to swipe and all that kind of stuff on your phones, aren't you? Chapter 11, beginning with verse 3. But I am afraid that just as Eve was deceived by the serpent's cunning, your minds may somehow be led astray from your sincere and pure devotion to Christ. For if someone comes to you and preaches a Jesus other than the Jesus we preached, or if you receive a different spirit from the one you received or a different gospel from the one you accepted, you put up with it easily enough. Paul's rebuking the Corinthians because they began to do what's happening in the church today. They began to look elsewhere than their pure devotion to Jesus Christ. That we don't thank God for anything, but the that He's the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus sits at the right hand of the Father, but what does it say in Revelation? He who overcomes, I give the right to sit next to me on my throne. It's Jesus Christ. And let me tell you something. Satan is trying to water that down to deceive even the elect that there are other ways to the Father except for Jesus Christ. No other name. We know it from Acts chapter 4. Acts chapter 4. Beginning with verse 10. It is by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, but whom God raised from the dead, that this man stands before you healed. He is the stone you builders rejected, which has become the capstone. Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to men by which we must be saved. 
Finally, Philippians chapter 2, beginning with verse 5. Your attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus, who being in the very nature of God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant of us and being made in human likeness. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on the cross. Therefore, God exalted him to middle ground, no, the highest place, and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, say Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. It's not about the Christian church. It's not about God being good to us. It's about the fact that Jesus humbled himself, died on the cross, rose again, and God exalted him to the highest place. Don't get in the habit of leaving the word Jesus Christ out of your glory, out of your praise. So many of the songs written today are so anemic even in the church. They don't even mention Jesus Christ half the time. God, uh, you're a good, good father. You're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. And I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. Forget about the fact that God, the best thing God did for us was take himself off that throne of glory, wrap himself in flesh, came and died for our sins and rose again to the highest place. Therefore, we will rise with him. That's why he's a good, good father. Not because he gives me stuff. Not because he gives me fit bread for my physical body so my stomach is full. They, the, the, the Bible says that those who reject God, they get their stomachs filled. That's all they care about. Their God is their stomach. No, we are about the bread of life that is Jesus Christ. And in him, we have the authority and the power. We rise again. We have a glorified body, but he's given us the keys of his kingdom, folks. Let's take advantage of the fact that we have power. No matter how much the door is closing to the church in the world today, the gates of hell will not be able to prevail against it. If those of us who believe and have that faith of a mustard seed would start standing up, not for our rights, but for our salvation and for the power that has been given us that we can say to the mountain, you get out of here. We can say to the trial. We can say to the addiction in our life. We can say to the sickness in our life. By his stripes, I am healed. Sickness, death, destruction. You have no authority over me or those that are still in darkness. We rebuke the spirit that holds captive those that are in darkness, that they would be set free to see the light, to see the reality that Jesus Christ has done the most miraculous thing, has died, and he has paid the price of the sins of the world. He's already paid the price for you, whether you believe in him or not. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. We rejected him, yet he still died for us. He died for the sins of those in the past, the present, and the future. He died for once and for all. Now, all you do is you believe and you confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Not the church, not your pastor, nobody else. He must increase, I must decrease. You believe in your heart and you will be saved. And it even goes on to say, and your household. Imagine a parent and a person in a household that gets saved becomes an influence on their family the way God intended for it to be. Every knee is going to bow, whether by choice or by force. I want to do it by choice. I don't want to be forced to my knees in the last day as I'm heading to destruction and say, I should have known. I was told the truth that Jesus Christ is Lord, yet I rejected him. Don't be among those that reject him. 
be among those that accept him and now rise up as an army rising up. There is no other name but Jesus. I'm going to pray a prayer. Brenda's going to come and lead us in the perfect song. Aren't you glad for Jesus Christ? Amen. Did you hear a word from the Lord for your life today? I have. I have. We've got to rise up. We've got to take the authority he's given us. We can't be anemic any longer. We can't be, I guess that fame phrase lately is feckless or ineffective. The Bible says that the effectual prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Come on, people. Let's pray. Let's believe. Not pray about situations, but be able to speak to the situation. Anything you ask in my name, I will give it to you. According to my will, he will do it. Remember the name of Jesus. Let's sing that together before we close tonight.
my prayer tonight, Lord Jesus, fill us with your Holy Spirit. Empower us, embolden us to do things that you've called us to do. You said even greater things we would do, but we first have got to have faith that we have been given the power, that the power is there, and that signs and wonders will follow those who believe in God and in his power. Lord, help us to not believe the lie of the enemy that says we are powerless in this world. We are overcomers in this world. I pray for each one that is here tonight that you would empower us, those that are watching online, that the signs and wonders would follow those who believe, that we would be able to speak to sickness, that we would be able to speak to captivity, to everything that the, Satan has power and control over, and pray that it's loosed in the name of Jesus, that the evil spirits are bound in the name of Jesus. You said whatever we loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Whatever we bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Lord, let us rise up to that level of power that you've promised us. And Lord, let us not continue to believe the lie of the enemy that seeks to destroy us, that seeks to strip us of our power. But Lord, let the church rise up, the true church that is built on the rock and that the gates of hell will not prevail against it. And we pray this and we praise that wonderful name of Jesus Christ, King of kings and Lord of lords. Amen. 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 God bless you.